how are you today? So today, Purdy wanted to come and join us for the story. She's had a busy weekend going out with her daddy and she's been for lots of lovely walks, not very far from here, where I think she saw some lambs and I think she saw some cows and maybe some rabbits in the field too. And she learned that she can, even though she's not very big, jump over stories. Is that right? So she's quite tired today, aren't you, darling? Hey, all that jumping, apparently, over lots and lots of different styles. But she also likes to get up to mischief, a bit like the little dog in our story today. Hey? So, children, we need to put on our seatbelts so you can be safe. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Check your flaps. Bing bong, bing bong, bing bong. Check your fuel. Glug, 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 glug. Check your boosters. Vroom! <laughs> and we say, oh, dearie me, Purdy, I know. We say, chocks away. And we count down. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Blast off! Oh. <laughs> click, 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 click. Hey, are you going to lay down now? Down we go. Good girl. So today's story is about a very cheeky doggy and we've met him a couple of times now. Recently he went to the vets and then before that he was out with his pals having good old sniffness, snuffle around and about town thinking they were the bee's knees. I've just realised that one of my other doggies is in here today as well, Cashew, and he's having a lovely sleep, but I don't think he's going to wander over. I can just make out some brown over in the distance, so I think it's him. I don't think I've got another strange brown object in my sitting room. So here we go. It's called Harry McClary's Bone. And Purdy has a bone, it's called an antler bone, and she loves to toss it and throw it at my feet and gnaw at it. It's her most favourite thing. Oh, I wonder what shop Harry McClary is sitting at. I wonder if you know the name. In the shop they've got sausages and chops and joints of meat. Do you know what kind of shop that's called? It's called a butcher's. Okay, so that's he's down at the butchers, sitting there patiently waiting. Down in the town, by the butcher's shop door, sat Harry McClary from Donaldson's Dairy. There he is. Out the door came Samuel Stone, and he gave Harry McClary the tastiest bone. Oh, it's a big bone. Look, it goes from here all the way to there. It's huge. Then off up the street and scurrying feet on his way to the dairy went Harry McClary. Can you see who's peeping behind here, though? I can't quite make it out, but I think there's a few noses that go... <laughs> I think they can smell a bones about. Oh yes, here they come. And chasing him home with their eyes on the bone went Hercules Morse as big as a horse. But somebody puts so covered in spots. Muffin the clay like a bundle of hay. Maloney, all skinny and bony, and schnitzel von Klum with the very low tongue. Hungry sniffing <laughs> and licking their chops, mm -mm -mm. they followed him up past the school and the shops. Can you hear 
little doggies barking. You can. I wonder what they're saying. They came to the sign selling Sutherland sauce. Through they all went. Oh, look, they must know there's a special bit that they can sneak through. Except Hercules Morse. Why couldn't Hercules Morse fit through? He was too big. That's right, he's got his bottom stuck a bit like that story smudge we had. They came to a hedge along Waterloo Way. Under they went. They go under. Except Muffin McClay. Why couldn't Muffin McClay go under the hedge? He's too big. So he's lost two dogs chasing his bone now, hasn't he? Hercules Morse and Muffin McClay. I wonder if he can lose any others. They came to a yard full of dinghies and yachts. Round they all went. They're going to go round this time. They're not going to go under. They're going to go round. Round they all went. Except Bottomley Potts. What on earth happened to Bottomley Potts? Can you see? He's got all caught up in the lobster pots and all in the fishing rope as well. He's got himself in a right old tangled mess. Poor Bottomley Pots, I should think he's feeling a bit sad. He wanted that bone. So he's lost three now. Hercules Morse, Muffin McClay and Bottomley Pots. They came to a building site, cluttered and stony. Over they went. So this time they're going to go over. They're not going to go under. They're not going to go round. They're going to go over they went. Except a Bits of Maloney. What happened to Bits of Maloney? He's got stuck all in the bricks. He can't quite scramble over the top, can he? So we've lost Hercules Morse, Muffin McClay, Bottomley Potts. And bits of baloney. This is going to test my memory skills, children. I might need Annabelle to help me. They came to a wall by the house of Miss Plum. Oh, this is a bit like what Purdy was doing with the styes. Over they jumped. Woohoo! We've oh, got sunflowers growing. Except Schnitzel von Krum. Poor Schnitzel von Krum. He can't jump high enough to go over, can he? So he's lost Hercules Morse, as big as a horse, Bottomley Pots, all covered in spots, Bits of Maloney, all skinny and bony, and Schnitzel von Krum with a very low tongue, and Muffin McClay like a bundle of hay. So he's lost them all, hasn't he? And instead, at last he was free to go home on his own. Harry McClary! with all of his bone. He had waited at the butcher shop so patiently, he didn't want to share it at all. I think Purdy liked that story. I think she's gone fast asleep. And I think Cashew's fast asleep over there as well. So we are say that it's time to go home, children. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. When the big hand reaches number 12, and the little hand reaches number 12, it's time to go home and to disturb Purdy because she's only allowed on the sofa when I am reading to you. This is a very special treat, so she's not allowed to stay here without me. Uh-uh, that would be bad news. So I'm going to have to wake her up, which seems rather cool. Cheerio, children. <laughs>